My name is Dr. Gaetano Morello. I am a practicing naturopathic physician. I've been practicing for over 22 years. I have a practice in West Vancouver and I also work at BC Women's Hospital in Vancouver treating complex chronic diseases, fibromyalgia, myalgic myoencephalitis, uh, chronic disease syndrome, and also Lyme disease. I'm also a, a published author, I've written several books, one of them Whole Body Cleansing, and I'm also a contributing author to a textbook of natural medicine, one of the most definitive textbooks on alternative medicine on the planet, uh, authored by Dr. Michael Murray and Joe Pizzorno. Why is healthy gut flora so important? You know, that's a, that is really one of the most important questions you can ask, and, uh, and I'm gonna give you some background. Uh, one of the things we know in medicine now is that the caveat of all healing actually occurs on the gastrointestinal level. Well, why is that? Well, most of us know that the gut is important for digestion, for elimination, for the absorption of nutrients. But did you know that 80% of your immune system is located in the gut? Did you know that there's as many neurochemicals produced in the gut as there is in the brain? Did you know the amount of energy it takes to digest foods? And did you know that there's over 100 trillion bacteria located in our gastrointestinal tract? And lastly, did you know that what separates the gut lining from your blood, in other words, all that stuff in your gut, including the 100 trillion bacteria, what separates it from your blood is actually one cell, a microscopic entity. And what's interesting about that is, this to me is the paradox of medicine. For example, that one cell lining has to be strong enough to block these bacteria, to block toxins, to block large macromolecules from getting inside the blood. At the same time, it has to be porous enough to allow nutrients to get inside the blood. So this is really a paradox. So keeping the gut healthy, keeping the microbiome, which is the totality of all the bacteria in the gut healthy, becomes a critical, critical component in maintaining systemic health. And what we're looking in the research now is that increased gut permeability, the breakdown of that lining, really is associated with many of the complex chronic diseases that we now see in our society. So keeping that gut healthy becomes critically important in systemic health. What type of probiotic do I recommend? You know, this is one of the complex questions. And I think most of us know that all the probiotics available, it's very confusing what probiotic to take. And everybody, of course, has the best probiotic, <laughs> but is that the case? And so I think to answer that question, uh, we gotta take a step back. Let's talk about, for example, one of the, uh, a, a very serious infection that one can get uh, when on antibiotics or when in a hospital on antibiotics. And this is something called C. difficile. C. difficile is one of the most difficult bacteria to eradicate. And what it creates is it gives you diarrhea and extremely uh, high levels of, of, of gastrointestinal discomfort. And so the treatment for C. difficile is giving IV antibiotics. Now I'm gonna give you a case. A 38 year old female comes into the hospital, develops C. difficile. She is placed on IV antibiotics for one week, two weeks, three weeks, three months. The C. difficile is not eradicated. She has lost over 40 pounds. She was of normal weight to start off with, so now she's in critical condition. What the gastroenterologist did, went into her husband's gastrointestinal tract, isolated healthy bacteria, bacteria from his gut, inoculated her with those bacteria, and the C. difficile disappeared in two days. She's completely healed. What does that tell us? That tells us that human bacteria from a healthy gut are more powerful than the most powerful antibiotics in the world. Why is that? Because the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut produce bacteriocins that kill and keep in check these bad bacteria. What does this tell us about probiotics? It tells us that human strain probiotics are pretty important. So one of the things that I recommend is human strain probiotics that are room temperature stable. And why do I want room temperature stable probiotics? Because Refrigerated products, I never know what I'm gonna get in the end. Why is that? Because taking a, a probiotic out of the fridge causes death to those back here. Putting them back in the fridge restores it. All out and in, in and out, we don't have a real control of what we are getting. So 
I like to utilize room temperature stable, human, uh, human strain probiotics taken daily. I think probiotics are going to become a mainstream uh, uh, supplement to take on a daily basis because it really has an impact on the gut. Why? Because the gut needs a healthy microbiome. I think one of the things with the Primadophilus brand and the Optima, I really like the Optima brand and a couple of reasons. One, it's human strain. Two, it's got studied strains because a lot of these strains are studied. In other words, what's a studied strain? One that has gone through clinical trials, double blind placebo trials. Uh, uh, thirdly, it's room temperature stable. That means you don't have to worry about refrigeration and you know that when it says 50 billion, that's what you're getting. Uh, uh, and, and fourth, it is a pretty high, um, uh, uh, pretty high payload, and this is called CFU, uh, calling and counts, 50 billion is a, is a high payload that is really, really effective. So the end result is, you know, what is the end result? Am I getting an impact from taking this probiotic? And you know, I think the Primadophis Optima 50 billion room temperature stable delivers that. I think, you know, most people uh, would benefit from a Primadophis Optima, uh, people that have uh, immune conditions, people that have uh, gastrointestinal issues. You know, most individuals will need some help. People that are on antibiotics, uh, people have gone through uh, a lot of different chronic diseases. Uh, and for those of us who are extremely healthy, luckily, you can go on and take, for example, one of the pearls. A pearl is, a, is another branded product uh, from enzymatic therapy. It's part of the Nature's Way family and uh, it has less of a payload. It, there's a, a bacteria in there called a BB536 that has over 80 clinical trials and this is something that you can take on a daily basis. So, you know, we have something for everybody. There is a children's primadophilus, so you would take the children's primadophilus, which has a lower payload, uh, but more uh, in line with, with, with children. And the reason why it's, you need different bacteria for different uh, uh, ages is because there's an evolution of the microbiome. You know, when we're born, it's, it's the microbiome is small and it grows from there. This is why it's so important. You know, uh, you know there's been research done on children uh, born vaginally and, and children born by C-section. There's a, there's a huge differential in those kids um, as far as conditions. You know, kids that are born by C-section have greater risks of asthma and eczema. Why? Because when they're, when they're not going through the vaginal canal, then that uh, they're not absorbing or they're not bringing in bacteria that create the microbiome. Um, so it's really, so this is important. So we know that uh, children need certain bacteria. We know that adults need other bacteria. So it's good to have a, a differential that way. Primadophis ruteri is, you know, has been uh, studied on, on a number of, uh, of, of with different conditions. So a Primadophis ruteri, much like other uh, Primadophis line bacteria, you know, are good for immune stimulation. So this is something that uh, uh, people utilize more for those kinds of things. And one of the things that the Primadophis line has done is tried to really mix a lot of different strains because we think the variety becomes important. This is some of what some of the clinical trials are showing right now. Why would somebody take a more higher uh, 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 primadophilus, in other words, a higher payload, like 100 billion versus 50 billion? Well, you know, what I found in clinical practice is that the greater the uh, disease or the more severe the disease, and you know, what do I mean by that? Well, somebody who has Crohn's disease has a pretty serious gastrointestinal disorder, somebody who has ulcerative colitis, somebody who has gone through massive amounts of IV antibiotics, those individuals would be more apt to take a 100 billion count CFU, uh, as opposed to those that didn't have, somebody who has an eczema or somebody who has a, a slight gastrointestinal upset. So depending on the severity of your condition, you're more able to tolerate the higher payloads. For example, I wouldn't do too well with 100 billion, I would get gastrointestinal upset. So I think it's important for uh, the consumer to do research, it's important for the healthcare provider to provide that information uh, for those uh, patients, for those clients, in order for them to get the probiotic that's most suited for them. So why would we use Bifidobacter? Okay, so first of all, you know, I think we should just take a, a step back again. Let's bird's eye view. This is one of my favorite things to do, bird's eye view. So bird's eye view is this, that we have, we, we know, everybody knows we have a stomach, we have a small intestine, we have a large intestine. So 
Uh, what's interesting is who inhabit, which bacteria inhabit these, these areas. The lactobacilli inhabit the small intestine. The bifidobacter inhabit the large intestine. So therefore, when will we use more of a bifidobacter and when we use more of a lactobacillus? Well, the bifidobacter will be used more in colon-based conditions. So when somebody has diarrhea, for example, and then what is diarrhea? You know, this is, this is something that I get often asked at the hospital. What diarrhea, what is the, and very few people actually know the definition of it. And all it is is this, when post-digested food leaves the small intestine, it goes through something we call the ileocecal valve, which empties out into the colon. And so all this post-digested food is very liquidy. It's a liquid. The job of the colon is to absorb two to three liters of water a day. If the colon doesn't absorb the water into the bloodstream, that's what diarrhea is. Diarrhea is the inability of the colon to absorb water into the blood. That's how we get hydrated. Now, what's important here is, how does that happen? That happens through bifidobacter. Bifidobacter eats up these little fibers, creates these things we call short-chain fatty acids, and the short-chain fatty acids produce the osmotic gradient that drives water into the blood. So bifidobacter becomes pretty important in the functionality of the colon. So this is when we would more often use a more higher potency bifidobacter uh, uh, probiotic uh, than otherwise. That's why we have the primidophilus bifidobacter.